Welcome to this video on stress in a beam. It is one of several videos in a short course on stress posted at Tiriaz Toolbox, a website that contains notes, examples, and algorithms for structural analysis. Please visit the website for more videos and material relevant for this course. The objective in this video is to apply Moore's circle to study the stress states in a simply supported beam carrying uniformly distributed load. Based on the load and dimensions given in this slide, we calculate a maximum bending moment equal to 31.25 kN. That gives a maximum axial stress around 60 MPa. The maximum shear force is 25 kN, resulting in a maximum shear stress equal to 3.45 MPa. On the next slide, we study the stress state in the upper left part of the beam. From the coordinate stresses calculated on the previous slide, we know that this point is in compression, and we say the axial stress is 10 MPa. In this portion of the beam, the shear force is clockwise, which according to the definition of tau xy in a previous video is negative shear stress. Notice this subtlety that the shear force is clockwise and therefore positive, but the resulting shear stress on an infinitesimal material particle is negative by the definition of coordinate stresses. Still following the conventions explained in the video that introduced Moore's circle, the radius and shift of the circle are calculated and plotted in the sigma tau plane. Next, the stress state that is minus 10 sigma xx and minus 3 tau xy is plotted on the circle. Notice that the point sigma xx and tau xy is plotted above zero, although tau xy is negative. That is the rule when it is sigma xx that accompanies the shear stress value. It may help to think of this particular shear to be clockwise and hence positive in a beam laid along the x-axis, as shown in this slide with small red arrows. The two solid red dots in this slide correspond to each other. Now, draw the stress state sigma yy and tau yx, here with sigma yy being zero. That point is shown as a solid blue dot. The horizontal line from the red dot, and equivalently the vertical line from the blue dot, identifies the pole, which is here drawn as a solid black dot. Various stress states can now be identified, such as the two principal stresses identified in this slide. On the next slide, a point in the lower left side of the beam is studied. Now the shift of the circle is positive, so most of the circle appears in the region of positive axial stress, sigma. That makes sense, because the axial stress is indeed in tension at this point which is considered positive for axial stress. As in the previous slide, notice that the negative shear stress is reflected in the small red arrows, which appear in two places in the slide. Both represent the negative shear stress that is present at this location in the beam, but notice that the small red arrows are clockwise at one place and counterclockwise at another location. This may help us understand why the solid red dot is on the positive part of the tau axis, while the solid blue dot is below zero. Notice also that the principal stresses, namely the axial stress associated with zero shear stress, are identified in this figure. The next slide examines the stress state in the upper right side of the beam. The axial stress sigma xx is negative and the shear stress is positive. The positive shear stress is manifested in the small red arrows that appear here and here. The pole point and the principal stresses are also identified in this slide. The next slide examines the stress state in the lower right side of the beam. The axial stress sigma xx is positive, as is the shear stress. Again, the positive shear stress is manifested in the small red arrows that appear here and here. The red point is below zero because these small red arrows are counterclockwise for the positive shear stress. The pole point and the principal stresses are also identified in this slide. The concept of principal stress is isolated in this next slide. We see that there is a certain orientation of the coordinate system that results in zero shear stress. The axial stresses that act in this orientation are the principal stresses. As a result, there is pure tension on a plane in this particular orientation. The next slide shows how that particular orientation varies through the beam. The blue lines show the orientation of the principal stresses. This means that there is pure tension in the direction perpendicular to the blue lines, shown here as green arrows. 
These trajectories of principal stress orientation provide insight into the behavior of the beam. Specifically, we would expect to see cracks in directions that match these blue lines if the beam is heavily loaded and the material is homogeneous in all directions and of a type that develops cracks. The final slide gives a preview of an interactive demonstration of the use of Moore's circle to study the stress states in the simply supported beam that was covered in this video. In an app created with a software program called Mathematica, we can slide the bars at the top of this window in order to rotate the coordinate system and select all kinds of positions in the beam to study the stress state. That demonstration is captured in another video. Thanks for watching this video. Please visit Tiryaz Toolbox for more videos and material relevant for the modern structural engineer. See you soon.